Hello dear students, in the last class we have talked about three stanzas from our Desiderata poem and now today we will continue that poem. Uh, in the previous three stanza we have discussed about the things, uh, what to do in our life and uh, what we have to avoid uh, in our life. So, uh, we will continue with that and we will move on to stanza number 4 today. Be yourself specially, do not feign affection, neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. So, this is the stanza number 4 and in the uh, very beginning of this uh, stanza, Arman is telling us to be yourself. Okay. Uh, in some of the previous stanzas also, uh, we have talked about imitation, okay. uh, imitating someone else, uh, copying someone else way of communication, behavior. Okay. So, these different things uh, he has previously also talked and now also uh, he is telling us to be yourself, means what we are that we have to remain. Uh, in the sense, means whatever our own behavior, uh, be yourself means particularly our nature, what your nature is. So, be true uh, to your nature, that is the first advice uh, given by uh, Arman uh, in this stanza number 4. And next he says, specially do not feign affection, okay. uh, do not feign, see feign means it is pretending something or uh, expressing some fake uh, affection, affection means uh, that is uh, artificial manners, uh, that is uh, uh, insincere behavior, means uh, the behavior which is not ours, okay. uh, that is not our behavior, that is not our nature and if we are uh, behaving uh, in a different uh, manner, means that is not ours, then that would be called as affection. So, we do not have to be, uh, means we do not have to uh, get affected or we do not have to fake uh, our uh, artificial manners, whatever our natural, neutral uh, and uh, our natural instinct is there. So, with that uh, we have to express ourselves. Uh, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. Neither be uh, cynical about love. So, the third line of the fourth stanza that is neither be cynical about love. Now, love uh, is there and uh, this love is uh, the part of life okay and there are different forms of love in our life and here arman is suggesting us that we don't have to be cynical about love cynical means uh, pessimistic okay uh, distrustful so we don't have to be like that we have to uh, trust uh, uh, in the feeling of love and love is not just a, a straightforward or simple kind because love is something uh, that is at, uh, eternal, uh, it is unchanging and that, that, that is also called by uh, William Shakespeare in the first semester we have studied him. Yes, uh, the my mistress eyes are nothing like sun, but there is parody uh, in that poem and in his another sonnet he has talked what true love is and he uh, compares love uh, with the lighthouse that guide the lost shapes, uh, then he compares it uh, with uh, uh, that north star, okay. uh, the, that not north star also guides the uh, lost ship in the sea. So, in this way uh, love is a very important part of the life and we do not have to be distrustful about that, we do not have to be cynical about love, cynical means we do not have to be pessimistic because it is the part of life and when we get the true love, okay, it always motivates us. Many a time see, uh, because as I told you love, it, it does not have only one form. Okay. There are thousands of different types of love, love between friends, love between family. Okay. So, such a different forms are there and in that when uh, we encounter with true love, then automatically uh, it helps us, uh, it motivates us and uh, it always supports us to uh, lead our life uh, in a successful manner. 
uh, you might have observed many a time uh, we secure less mark uh, as uh, expected than expected. So, at that time what happens we become distressed, unhappy, but in such a situations also uh, the loved ones, our family, friends, all these people they always uh, motivate us and they tell us it is ok, uh, you can uh, try next time uh, get good marks or more than that uh, uh, in the next attempt. So, like this they always motivates us, it guides uh, us and that would be called as true love. So, we do not have to be uh, cynical about love, we do not have to be pessimistic about love. For in all phase of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Okay. Now, this love is uh, he compared, uh, Arman says that love is like grass and grass is perennial. Okay. Perennial means it is everlasting, because when we see uh, there would be everywhere we can see uh, the grass uh, arouses and uh, actually no one uh, deliberately uses it. Okay. Means, no one uh, sow the grass, but then also it automatically uh, gets sprouted out and in the same sense love is also uh, everlasting, it never ends, it never finishes. So, it remains till the end of uh, our life and that would be called as true love and this true love what it do? It helps us uh, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment means whatever difficulties, whatever tough situations in our life when we go uh, hopelessness would be there in our mind. So, uh, at such positions <coughs> this uh, true love always help us to uh, uh, come out of uh, such a hopelessness uh, situations, such a tough situations in our life and it uh, motivates us uh, to move on uh, to uh, our further life, to move on to our future. Uh, with great optimism. So, this is the importance of love uh, that An Aman has communicated uh, to us in this fourth stanza. Okay. So, uh, let us move on uh, to the next stanza. Take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth, nurture strength of spirit to shell you in sudden misfortune. But do not distress yourself with dark imaginings, many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. So, again he continues with this, uh, his idea to motivate us, motivate us to uh, advise us and what he says see in the very beginning of this fifth stanza, he says take kindly the counsel of the ears, counsel means advice. Okay. So, we have to take advice from whom? We have to take advice from the ears, ears means particularly it is the generation, it is an era, it means we have to get advice from our experiences, our experiences also and the elder ones experiences and with the help of that experience we have to mold our life. because experience is the best teacher and experience teaches us very uh, important things in our life and when we learn something by experience then definitely that would be the greatest achievement of our life. And because of that he advise us uh, in the very beginning of the fifth stanza uh, to take advice from our experiences, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Okay, we have to take experience and later on he talks about youth. Now, see when we refer to youth, youth is something different because youth is unexperienced. Uh, in our youth life, we do not pay uh, that much attention towards life, we do not pay attention uh, towards different things, uh, the seriousness, uh, the ideas. So, we do not pay attention towards that because youth itself it suggests something uh, unexperienced and uh, it it is guided by the passion. Okay. So, because of that passion, restlessness, uh, unexperiencedness uh, in the youth. So, these things we have to keep aside when we are moving on uh, to our life now, because when we are collecting our experiences at that time, we have to get the experiences that would help us in our future, in our coming life and that is why when we are moving, we are 
uh, trying to gather our experience at that time we have to keep aside, we have to surrender means we have to keep aside our experiences, our deeds in our youth because youth is something that is unexperienced because youth is something there we get uh, it is guided uh, by fortune because many a time we see uh, youth is something uh, and uh, so many different uh, things uh, that happens with us uh, and uh, we would be misguided by so many different things and uh, in our youth. So, that is why we have to keep aside uh, our youth and uh, we have to move on to our life. See what he says, nurture strength of spirit to shell you in sudden misfortune, nurture, nurture means we have to mold, we have to develop. What we have to develop? We have to develop strength of spirit, strength of spirit means it is uh, something our inner sense, it is something that is our inner force, uh, it is the your nature, uh, you uh, in between. So, that we have to develop and we have to uh, provide it strength to shell you in sudden misfortune. Why we have to develop our inner soul? Why we have to provide strength to our inner soul? our inner soul or inner spirit that because it helps us to face the sudden misfortune in our life because life is completely unpredicted and when what will happen with this life that, that we cannot predict. So, in such a situation misfortune, sudden misfortune, okay, when sudden misfortunes uh, would appear on us, okay, at that time uh, this inner self if you are strong within then automatically you will able to face different problems, difficult problems of our life and that is why we have to develop, we have to uh, provide strength, we have to make fit our inner soul, inner soul means that is our uh, what we can say the uh, it is the soul, okay, uh, the thinking process, uh, the inner idea uh, within us that we have to uh, develop or we have to uh, provide strength to it, so that uh, it will shell, shell means it helps us uh, to protect, uh, to guard ourselves uh, in the coming uh, sudden misfortunes, because many a time when misfortunes come we get baffled in our life and at that time we seek help from the others. And in such a situations when we are seeking help from someone else at that time uh, the person will help or not that is also the matter of time because certain people at certain time they may not able to help you. So, in such a situation we should not get collapsed in our life and that is why we have to develop our inner self automatically when you will develop your inner self, you are uh, you will able to protect yourself from any misfortune in the future. But do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Okay. This is another important means what we have to do and what we do not have to do. So, both the things Aman is communicating to us. So, in the next line what he says, but do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Imagining, in imaginings means that is uh, the dream of life and whatever imaginations, uh, whatever assumptions would be there, okay, uh, considering something in our own ideas. So, that dark imagination particularly it refers to the negativity of the life. So, we do not have to get uh, such a uh, distressness in our life, uh, we, we do not have to uh, get engrossed to the uh, negativity of the life and if we move on to that then definitely we are moving to the backward in our life and so, uh, he suggests us not to distress yourself with the dark imaginings to the uh, negativity of the life. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. Many fears, okay, automatically the dark imaginings uh, in the previous line we have talked that is the negativity of life and this negativity when it comes to us, it comes with fears, the fear in our mind and the fear get born in fatigue, fatigue means uh, tiredness is there of the life and loneliness, loneliness means isolation. When a person would be tired of some things, uh, whatever he is doing, if we get tired with that then definitely uh, 
there would be the fear in our mind, lurking tensions uh, would arise in our mind and uh, these things leads us towards the, uh, the previous dark imaginings, uh, towards the negativity of the life. So, we have to forget all that things, we have to vanish the fear in our mind, we have to be enthusiastic, loneliness is unnecessary, it is uh, not good for life. So, instead of that, we have to be in company. Uh, sharing our ideas and all these things. So, these things leads towards the betterment of life and beyond a wholesome discipline means there is overall well-being of human being. Okay. So, beyond that whatever good elements, good things that are in our life we have to be with that, we have to be strict with that and finally, whatever good and bad conditions would be there in front of you means whether you are so much happy or whether you are so sad because of some misfortune uh, with you, but in both the condition what we have to do? We have to be gentle with ourself. He says be gentle with yourself, means do not get changed the nature, the instinct, your inner soul that should not get changed uh, in such a situations. Though you are very happy at that time also you do not have to forget yourself and when you are so sad at that time also you do not have to forget yourself, you have to remember what your inner self, who you are that is very important and we have to be with that itself, that would be our character, our ideas, our thoughts. So, uh, this much uh, he talked uh, us uh, uh, in the fifth stanza. So, uh, let us move on to the next stanza. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars, you have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Now, all these things, uh, these are uh, a little bit philosophical, but that is the truth and we cannot deny this. Okay. You are the child of the universe, everyone on this universe, it is, the, it is supposed to be the child of the universe, because we have not come here with our own will, is it? Definitely not. Okay. We have been <clears throat> sent here and we have not come here by our own will, just like I wanted to be on earth and I get birth. So, it is not like that. So, it is something different, something is there behind uh, everything uh, which happens on this earth and so he is telling us that you are a child of the universe and it is no less than the trees and the stars and you are not greater and even lesser than other elements, because a human being is also a child and similarly all other things living and non-living things, everything is the child of this universe and universe whatever he provides to the others, same things he provides to the human beings, to you also and so you have a right to be here. Okay. All other things are there and similarly the human beings are also on this earth, but nowadays we see the human beings they are interrupting in all other lives, living and non-living elements of the universe and there are so many uh, different things that human beings are getting dominant and dominant and because of that uh, a lot problems are also getting raised, environmental prob uh, problems uh, uh, you all know that. So, this he says you are the child of the universe and no less than the trees and stars, just like the trees means living things, non-living things, stars. So, all these things are the child of universe and you are also one of them and just like others are living, they are being, they have right to be here in the same sense, you too have right to be here, uh, to live your life here and whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should and there are so many limitations also for our human life, because he says and whether or not it is clear to you, it is clear to you means you whether you are clear means whether you have knowledge about universe, because this universe is universe is so far uh, vast, it is beyond our imagination and because of that we may never uh, understand all this universe, okay. we may never understand what power uh, controls this universe. There are so many different things, even science also uh, could not uh, find. Uh, that uh, idea uh, of this universe or how this universe 
uh, is being controlled. It's something is there and what it is till the time he has not communicated to us what power is there, what this thing is there that is controlling this universe and no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should and this universe takes control of everything because in the uh, very uh, just before some time I told you the human beings they are interfering a lot in uh, environment, they are interfering in the nature in this universe and obviously once or sometime universe also takes control of all the things and we would have different problems we have to face and it shows its face sometime when the things get uh, over, uh, over control. So, in this manner uh, these things we cannot understand and we are not able, we are not that much capable to understand uh, this uh, power of universe, what it may do and what it is exactly. So, whatever we have with that we have to lead our life. So, this is about stanza number 6. Now, let us move on to the stanza number 7. Therefore, be at peace with God. Okay, now, he is talking us. In the previous stanza, he has not talked to us uh, about the power, what is behind this universe, but now he is uh, going to tell us. Therefore, be, uh, therefore, be at peace with God, whether you conceive him to be and whether your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life keep peace with your soul. Okay. In the very previous stanza, he talks about some power that controls universe and we are not able to understand it, we are not able to uh, capture, get uh, or grasp that power, what it is exactly and it is beyond uh, our imagination and it is beyond our control also. And in the very next stanza, in the seventh stanza, he says, therefore, be at peace with God. Okay, he is telling us, it means now he uh, re uh, resolve whatever power was there which were controlling the universe and he says that is obviously the God and the word God he has used, it is used in overall manner and this God is something. Okay. Uh, therefore, uh, first of all, what we have to be? Therefore, be at peace with God. Yes. We have to believe our faith would be there in the God. Okay. And then he says, whatever you conceive him to be. Yes. There are different forms of God. In India, we have many crowds of gods. Okay. Some people, they believe in different gods. Some people believe in different God. So, different religions are there. As per that religions, we have different gods. And all means not only in India, but throughout uh, the world, throughout this universe, we can find different forms of the God uh, and uh, different beliefs of the people. But we have to believe in it. Whatever form you are believing, no, no problem in it. But whatever is there, uh, whatever form uh, you assume to be uh, as God, but we have to believe, we have to make peace with God. Peace with God means we have to be happy. When God would be, uh, God would get peace with us, when you will do the works that has been given to us, okay. Means you are here, okay, not deliberately, but it is because of fate, yes. Means where you born, how you born, that is the fate and that was, uh, it, it was not in anyone's hand, not either yours hand, not your parents hand, it is some power, okay. And with that you are here then definitely every being who come to this universe okay automatically miss uh, that particular being come here with a particular purpose and this purpose we have to identify and we have to work on with that and definitely if we do so you will maintain the peace with god when we do good things, then definitely we, we maintain the peace with God and when we do evil things, then definitely what happens? We are combating with the God. Yes. Whenever we do good things, you would be happy and when we are going to do any evil thing, so definitely what happens? There would be the fear and lurking tension in our mind and obviously when that would be there in your mind, automatically you are 
the God is not there with you. So that we have to remember. And whatever your labors and aspirations are there in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace with your soul. This whatever confusions are there in your life, whatever ideology uh, it is talking about, means that is talking about labors. Labors means our deeds. Okay, whatever our deeds are there, aspirations means our thoughts are there. In the noisy confusion of life, life is full of noise. Life is complex. Our life is not straightforward. We don't know what will happen next second in our life. Do we? No. Yes. This what's going to happen today, tomorrow with us that we don't know. And it means life is unpredictable. It is uncertain and it is complex one. It has pain. It has joy. It has happiness. It has sadness. Everything. It has the easier work. It also has difficult tasks. So, at every walk, different, uh, at different spaces of life, we have different works and different situations we have to face in our life. And in this noisy and confusing and complex life, what we have to be? We have to keep peace with our soul. In the first line, he says, we have to maintain peace with God. And in the, in, in the last line of this paragraph uh, stanza uh, he says to maintain peace with our soul there is a connection between soul and god definitely and that's why he says what you are okay this soul soul means our deepest self what you are exactly it is very inside our self and we cannot uh, understand it uh, on the surface level for that we have to understand our inner ideas, our thought, our process and what we can say that uh, uh, different yogas, dhyan and all these things we have to do and definitely uh, you would encounter with your self and this self we have to maintain it with calmness. We have to keep it calm and definitely our life will be smoother. <coughs> Move on to the last stanza. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Okay, what life is? Life is sham. Sham means fraud. In life, we encounter with different frauds. Fraud personalities would be there in front of us. Drudgery means boring work would be there in life. Okay, everything what we do, we don't do with excitement ideas. Some boring ideology, some boring work that would also encounter, uh, you would encounter with that and broken dreams because we are the dream machines and every day we see different dreams and all these dreams may not be fulfilled and that is why the life is of broken dreams, broken dreams means unfulfilled dreams. So all these difficulties of life, complexities of life are there. but even after that, it is still a beautiful world. Yes. Though we have all these uh, distractions, okay, uh, the fraud, boring work, unf uh, unfulfilled dreams and all these things in our life, then also life is beautiful. What we have to do? We have to count <coughs> the sweeter part of our life because life is not only uh, uh, cont uh, life does not contain only sad things, there are mixed things, so many different things uh, happens with us and we have to count good among that. Okay. Uh, many a time uh, what we do uh, at our <coughs> home, uh, we sort out uh, sometimes wheat and particularly uh, girls, okay. uh, boys also might be doing some different works and we sort out some stone from that. So, what we do? We just pick out all that stones and throw it out. In the same sense, what we have to do? We have to pick out all sadness, uh, all distracting elements from our life, from our thinking process, from our inner self and we have to throw it out. And when we throw it out, then automatically what will happen? The light will become 
brighter it will become sweeter and we have to remember that sweet part of our life to be happy forever in our life and so in the very last he says be cheerful he suggests us to look at the bright side of the life yes and when we look at the bright side of life then automatically our coming future that will be also bright one strive to be happy okay we have to <coughs> strive to be happy means we have to f focus on the happiness we have to count our blessings we have to count our good deeds no problem in past sometime we might have did some wrong things but we don't have to repeat that things we have to just delete that from our memory and from our life it should not come again in our life and definitely if we have all these good things then our <coughs> future that would also be very enthusiastic and bright one so in this way arman continuously motivating us throughout this poem and here we uh, come to the end of poem so by this poem throughout this poem max arman <coughs> as a spiritual preacher he communicates us about different things of life what we have to do and what we don't have to do so if we combine all these things if we sum up all these things then what will happen we get so many things that he has communicated us to <coughs> follow in our life and also there are some certain things that we have to neglect in our life and life is the combination of the goodness and sadness joy and sadness all these things would be there in our life and it comes like this that is not in our hand everything is not in our hand in some at some level we can change ourselves but we can't change some particular things of our life also and because of that we have to believe in god also <clears throat> so in this way with spirituality with morality and inspiration arman comes to the end uh, of this poem by telling us to count the blessings and brightness of our life and enjoy that brightness okay remember that brightness and lead your life in a bright ma <coughs> bright manner thank you very much uh, let's meet in the next unit yes